And we're back with part two of how a bill becomes a law. These videos only allow me to do it for five minutes at a time, so that's why I broke it down. So let's review again. You've introduced a bill. It's been referred to subcommittee. They marked it up. They changed a lot of it. It doesn't look quite like it did here, but you're still pretty happy with it. The committee decided, yep, we like it. They put it on the calendar. The House debated it. Gold mine, guess what? They like it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put it to a full vote. Let's legitimize this thing. And what happens is the Speaker of the House and the Rules Committee takes a vote. And people vote by yay, nay, or abstain. And if you have a majority, if you have 51% or more of representatives in the House agreeing that this bill needs to be a law, guess what? Da -da -da -da. It goes over to the Senate. Now, you don't start automatically where the Senate goes to vote on it. Nope, you go from the House voting and approving on it all the way back up to now the Senate is going to introduce it as a, as a possible bill, as a possible law. Same thing happens. The Senate, the steering committee now, will direct it into the Senate, and their subcommittees will debate it, argue it, figure it out. They'll make their changes. They'll mark it up. They'll edit it. They'll tweak it. Then their subcommittee will vote on it. Now, same exact process in the House. At any one point, whether it's the voting on by the committee, the marking it up, or the, re the initial review by the subcommittee, during any of these stages, your bill could be tabled or thrown away. So that is very possible. So even if you've successfully made it through the House, if the Senate decides, yep, nope, we're not going with it, your bill is garbage. And it either has to start over in the House again, or you just have to accept that it's garbage. So say that they vote on it in subcommittee, ta-da, it passes. Guess what? The subcommittee puts your bill on the Senate calendar now. And so if it's on the Senate calendar, then it's read, along, read aloud at a Senate session. And this is where you can have a filibuster. So say somebody really doesn't like your bill, or they really just don't like you. They might try to stop your bill from happening. And if they know that your bill needs to pass by a certain date, they may filibuster the heck out of it so that that can't happen. Now remember, a filibuster can only happen in the Senate. It cannot happen in the House. Only the Senate, not the House. Filibuster in the Senate, not the House. Okay? So say you survive and you don't have the filibuster or the filibuster lasts very, very short. And as a result, the senators agree, let's put this bill to a vote. Same exact thing as in the House. They vote yay, nay, abstain. All yays, all nays, all abstains. That's not quite how they do it. Instead, what they usually do is a roll call. So with the senator from Alabama, please vote. With the senator from Alaska, please vote. With the senator from Maryland, please vote. I know that was not ABC order, but you got the hint, okay? Say that it wins. Say that the Senate, a majority of the Senate has decided, yep, we like this, this bill. It needs to become a law. Well, guess what? You can do your happy dance because both the House and the Senate have decided that your bill is good. So what happens next? We bring it to the big guy. And what that means is the, the bill comes to the White House. Okay? And who lives in the White House? The President. And the President has a choice. The President can sign your bill into a law and da 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 da, your bill becomes a law, or the President can decide to veto your bill and say, nope, I don't want it. Now, we're going to talk about different ways that the President can veto. But the most important thing to gather from this is that those are the president's two options. Sign it, yep, it's a law. Veto it, nope, it's gone. And there are repercussions that Congress can use to override a veto. But that's the moral of the story of how a bill becomes a law. Hopefully this is a little bit more clear, a little bit more simple for you guys to be able to understand this. Now here's what I want you guys to do for the rest of Plan E. Go over this again. Understand this infographic. I'm going to go ahead and put the PowerPoint from today up on Pilot, and I want you to finish filling out that chart using just the PowerPoint and the tips you got here. Email me if you have any questions. Have a great day. Stay warm. I'll see you all tomorrow.